Hi everyone, my name is Devin Garnett and I am a certified athletic trainer with Select Physical Therapy in Des Moines, Iowa. Hi everyone, my name is Megan Brady. I'm an assistant professor in the Masters in Athletic Training program at Drake University. Devin and I are here today to talk to you about nutrition for your student athletes. So Megan, I'm sure you've experienced it when you've been practicing. We get a ton of questions on nutrition, eating right, what can I do to boost my performance with nutrition? And there's a ton of different ways you can look into it, and each of these can be tailored to individual athletes and sports. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? You know, Devin, I really I get a lot of these questions also, and I think it's important for students and uh, athletes to eat things that taste good to them, but that are also going to help them perform at their highest level. So um, what I want to know is, what should I eat to perform at my high level? Uh, to eat at a high level, you need to get enough calories. It's been kind of looked at that three out of four athletes probably are not getting enough caloric intake throughout their day. And if they are, it may not be the best food. They may have been told to bulk up and eat food. And that may be three milkshakes, just junk food candy bars. Really, we need to look at eating that balanced meal that gives us all those calories that are quality food with minerals, vitamins, those micro and macronutrients that equal higher increased performance. You know, Devin, I see a lot of kids walking out to play a game and they've got a Snickers in their hand or they've got a bag of McDonald's in their hand. Is it a good idea to, to eat a meal right before activity or when, when should I be eating my meals? Eating before your activity would be smart to do to get some energy to your body, but it's not going to be a whole meal. It's going to be uh, maybe a snack, a healthy type snack that's kind of tailored to the activity. Um, Two thirds of our calorie intake should be consumed before two thirds of our day is over. So if you have a night practice and you've eaten nothing all day, then you think after that practice, you're gonna get all your calories. That's not gonna work out very well. You're probably gonna struggle through the activity. Um, and then you're just gonna have poor recovery and poor performance if you're trying to front or not front load your calories and just kind of eat them whenever you have time. So how do I know if I've eaten enough? How do I? How do I tell throughout the day? Is it because I'm full? Is it because I feel good? How do, what's, the, what's the, the line that says, you know, you've had enough to eat today? One of the simplest things that we can look at doing is just tracking your food. You may think you're doing things correctly, but until you see it on paper and actually track it, that actually really shows what you're really doing. Then you can really look at it and break down, when am I eating my food? Am I doing it correctly? Um, you can show someone and they can look at it with you. Uh, until you do that, you may not know if you're doing it correctly. So one thing I'd recommend is just getting a food tracker, smartphones. There's a hundred different things you can look at to track your food intake. That's a great idea. I think tracking food is, is wonderful <clears throat> to make sure I know what I'm eating on a daily basis. When I walk by that bowl of M&Ms, I grab a handful. If I don't write it down, I don't remember I ate those, and that's probably not the best thing for my diet. Yeah, I think everyone doesn't, people don't realize what they're eating throughout the day. They may look at their full meals or their big meals, but they sometimes forget about those little snacks that they had, or they may not remember that they had that handful of M&Ms, or reality is that handful of M&Ms was good, but maybe you should have had an apple at that point. And you can track that and look at it. We can look back at that and show that. Make changes as necessary. Yep. So I hear a lot about healthy fats. Um, how much fat should we eat? What kind of fat should I be eating throughout my day? So our diet should be... If we're going to look at it from three components, we should have healthy fats, healthy carbohydrates, and adequate protein intake. So when we look at fats, um, we're going to look at it as our diet as basically 100%. So of that 100% of the food we eat, 20 to 30% of that should be fats. On an average athlete, that may be 40 to 80 milligrams, and you can change that based on activity or what your goals are, or if you're looking at different eating plans, but in general... And that's what we should be trying to eat. And that should be included with every meal. Now, before activity may not want to include a high fat meal because it can be a little bit harder to digest and cause um, gastrointestinal upset, but just something to include with every meal, at least with our main meals. And this may be some of the healthy fats that we look at are gonna be nuts, um, almonds, peanuts, uh, pistachios, any of those, the nut categories. Uh, avocados are a great fat. Um, fatty fish is one of the best ones we can get with, they're full of the omega-3 fatty acids. Um, different oils, not all oils are created equal, but olive oil, canola oil are great options. Uh, eggs have kind of gotten a bad rap. No one knows the healthy amount of eggs, but eggs are great for us. 
Um, and you could eat eggs every day and still be fine and not worry about people worry about cholesterol and things with that with eggs, but they're a great fat. Um, any of the dairies, as long as you don't go too much on dairies or too much like on cheese and stuff are great for us, including yogurts. Yogurts are great with protein and the fats. And then some of the odd ones that we may not think about is chia seeds. Chia seeds have a lot of really good fats in them and they have that wide spectrum of fats that kind of hit all the different things. And then we want to avoid those processed fats or large amounts of saturated fats like butter and red meats or just really fatty meats. You know, a lot of these things you mentioned are, are easy to pack in a backpack. Absolutely. A bag of nuts, um, hard-boiled eggs, you throw in a little cooler, slice of cheese or a cheese stick, um, container of yogurt. Those yeah. are easy things to pack easy. and take throughout the day. Another super thing, easy, is just having a pack of tuna around. You can get a pack of tuna for under a dollar, full of protein, full of the good fats. Um, you don't have to have it refrigerated, just can have in your backpack and ready to go. Put on some crackers and... yeah. There's a great snack. So I hear a lot about carbs. Those are those are the big um, hubbub in nutrition these days. What are your thoughts on carbs? Are they good? Should I eat them? Should I take them out of my diet? Carbohydrates are the single most important thing for an athlete's diet. If you're going to track something and look at that, I would recommend looking at carbs just for a performance standpoint, getting that energy to perform. Um, once again, if we're looking at that 100% of the diet, athletes should try to get 40 to 65% of carbs. The higher endurance athletes are going to be trying to hit more of that 65%. And then this is going to be about 2 to 4 grams of carbs per body weight. So if I weigh 160 pounds, I may be getting three to 300 to 700 grams of carbohydrates a day. Um, like I said, these are our main energy source, but these should not be coming, be coming from processed foods. Those junk foods that are they're going to be really high in carbohydrates, but they're not going to give you that fuel that you need. Um, some of these quicker carbs might be better during competition when our body needs to process them really quickly. Uh, but you can look at different, there's companies that make those quick carbohydrates for competition. Um, when we're looking at general carbohydrates, some things to look at to eat would be rice, beans, uh, grains, whole wheat products. Fruits are great and full of carbohydrates. Um, root vegetables like sweet potatoes, um, quinoa, healthy prepared or potatoes, not french fries, not potato chips, uh, corn, legumes, squash, pumpkin, oats, buckwheat, bananas, the list goes on and on. But kind of when you think of grains and healthy type foods, those can have those really good carbohydrates in them. So I should need a bag of Cheetos before I go to my training. Not, not recommended. <laughs> you might have a short burst of energy, but they're not going to feel good <laughs> afterwards. But what about the keto diet? That's everything in the news today. Everybody's doing the keto diet. Tons of people are losing weight. Is it healthy? Is it good for me? If you are going to sit on your couch and do absolutely nothing, the keto diet may be okay for you. But if you plan on doing any type of activity, you are going to really struggle. And you can also get what's called the keto sickness or carbohydrate sickness where you are trying to perform without carbohydrates and your body kind of shuts down and gets sick and does not feel good. And if you're not feeling well, that's not going to correlate to uh, high performance. And one thing that people don't think about is um, when our, our carbohydrates get stored within our muscles, they also store water. So if you're low in carbohydrates, you also could become dehydrated very quickly. And then also the first thing that our body breaks down when there's not carbohydrates present is muscle. So you're going to break down that protein and the muscles in our body and atrophy and get weaker. And my heart is a big muscle. Your heart's so, a very big muscle. And your body's not going to, uh, it's not going to decide, I'm going to break down my hamstrings, I'm going to break down my heart. It's just going to break down muscle and whatever goes. Yeah, and then you're just going to, you, you may not even realize your performance is struggling. You're just going to, you're just going to get weaker and it's, it may be gradual, maybe quick, but it's not going to be best for your performance. So when it comes to eating before a game or competition or, or workout, is, is the timing important of when I eat? Yeah, we'll cover this a little bit later, but timing is very important. Um, we want to make sure that before our activities that we're getting 20 to 30 milligrams of carbohydrates and packaging is great for that. You can just look at simple packaging on um, nutrition products and it will tell you usually how many carbohydrates in this, are in that. Um, but you don't want to eat a big meal before you go do activity because you're going to also may have that stomach upset. So um, something that's light and easy that is packed full of carbs might be good before activity. And then about every hour that we're exercising, try to get another 20 to 30 grams of carbohydrates and try to consume that with water. Um, mm. But 
just trying to make sure that we have the energy available so we are ready to um, act ready for the activity. You know, I see a lot of commercials for protein supplements and when I go to the mall, I walk by stores that sell protein supplements. Um, do I need those? Why is, why is protein important? Protein is really important to help our body recover, build muscle. Um, protein is just one of those, one of those again, very important um, macronutrients that our body needs. Uh, this should be about 20-30% of our meal or nutrition intake. So this is going to be 0.7 to 1.14 grams per body. So just think about about one gram per body weight. That that's about how many grams of protein you're eating today a day. Um, choosing lean proteins is way better than supplementing. So real foods are way better for our body. They process them way better, uh, but they can really our body will absorb those. So if you are not able to get the food, then supplements may be used. Um, but always look for real food first. If you're going to use a supplement. We recommend working with a professional. Not all supplements are created equally. Uh, some supplements um, contain bad, are banned substances. So if you are an NCAA athlete and get drug tested, there may be some supplements that would get flagged as a banned substance, which we do not want. And then try to include protein with every meal. Um, our bodies are kind of like sponges. We can only absorb so much mm -hmm. protein at a time. So I'll see athletes who consume 40 to 50 milligrams of, or grams of protein at a time, and their body is going to only absorb 20 to 30 grams of that. So just be aware that you're going to be wasting potentially money if you're taking too much protein at a time. So Dylan, should we talk about how to eat after workouts, how to prepare for competitions? Absolutely. Let's uh, get into that. How soon after a workout or competition do you recommend eating, Megan? You know, this is a great question. Ideally, Athletes are going to eat within 30 minutes of a workout or competition. So maybe on their way home, as soon as they get home, you got to replace those carbohydrates, those proteins, those fluids that were used up during the workout. Uh, if you eat within the 30-minute time frame, that's best to repair your muscles, get you ready for the next workout or competition that maybe you have another one that day or maybe you have one the next morning. But you got to put back what you used. you got to get your body ready for the next, next thing that's coming up. Yeah, I think too often athletes get done with their workouts and just – go sit down, play on their phones, go hang out with friends, and they don't really get that proper recovery or nutrition afterwards. Absolutely. And that's one of the best times to get that recovery in and get that nutrition in. Definitely. So Megan, what do you think some of the best practices for athletes to eat after practices or competitions are so they actually do get that nutrition and get properly recovered? You know, Devin, it goes along with what you mentioned earlier, um, the carbohydrates, things like bagels, graham crackers, pretzels, granola bars, fruit, all are great sources of carbohydrates to replace the energy that you used. You also need a little bit of protein, like the yogurt, the cheese. Chocolate milk is a great recovery thing to use after a game or a workout. Um, peanut butter. If you're allergic to peanut butter, you can go back to those other things like the yogurt, the cheese, um, chocolate milk. A great post-workout competition snack, a bagel with cheese or a bagel with peanut butter, or a banana and chocolate milk. And always remember, you got to drink plenty of water. you got to have water for recovery. Your body needs it. Yeah, definitely. I think if you don't have that water, or eating that food, your body's not going to get those the carbohydrates to go back in the muscles and with that water, and you're going to de be dehydrated. And if even if your nutrition's right, if that nutri the hydration's not there, you're going to struggle. Absolutely, your muscles are going to feel terrible if you're dehydrated. You're going to be stiff and sore, and mm -hmm. no one likes that. Exactly. So we kind of touched on this, but let's go back to it. What are your thoughts for athletes to eat on a regular basis? I think it's so often they're not whether it's in school or just before competition, that they maybe not thinking about it or just are really struggling to eat regular and get that enough calories and enough food throughout the day. Right, and timing throughout the day can be hard with classes and school and practices, but best case scenario, you're eating three meals a day, about two to three snacks a day. So you're consuming something into your body every three to four hours. Um, you gotta, again, drink a lot of water throughout the day, carry a water bottle with you if you can, keep it in your backpack. Um, and eat one to three hours for every workout or, or every workout practice, competition, whatever it is. One to three hours beforehand, you're putting something into your body. Carbs, a little bit of protein, fluids to keep you going and, and so you can perform at your best. Now, we all know how much fun practices are. And it's great to feel great on practice day. But we're really going for competition day. How do I perform best on those days that or those competitions? How do I get that most 
best performance? Well, I think the, the most important thing on competition day is you eat something that you like, something that you normally eat. Again, not the McDonald's, not the Taco John's on your on your way to the game or um, the meat. So I shouldn't go to Casey's and get pizza? I don't, and... I don't think, or, or a donut. I don't think that's probably your best option. And a Mountain Dew. Um, and a Mountain Dew. Um, <laughs> again, you might get that, that spike initially, but a couple hours in, that's just going to sit heavy in your stomach and you're just, you're going to feel miserable. Um, in competition day, not the time to try new food. So if you've never eaten a certain granola bar before um, or a certain Gatorade, I probably wouldn't recommend it on competition day because you just don't know how your body's going to react to it. Uh, secondly, you should probably eat a small meal, smaller than a regular meal, about three to four hours before your game, your meet, your match, whatever it is you have coming up that day. If your competition is in the morning or it's in the early afternoon, a breakfast option might be a poached, boiled, or scrambled egg. Devin mentioned eggs earlier. They've kind of gotten a bad rap. They're really a great source of energy and protein. Some lean ham, low-fat sausage. Maybe you don't like a hot breakfast. Um, so an English muffin. Uh, cold cereal, not the sugary kind, not the Lucky Charms, not the uh, Fruity Pebbles, but perhaps, you know, Chex or um, granola, something that doesn't have all the added sugar to it. Um, if you're going to compete in the afternoon or evening, uh, you could try something like spaghetti and red sauce, not too heavy on your stomach. Low-fat mac and cheese, low-fat, not craft, something low in fat. Those white cheeses don't have as much high fat content to them. Lean turkey, chicken, pork, fish, all great options for those evening, early afternoon competitions when you got to get a lunch or a, or a late snack in. A little side note, what do you think if I have multiple competitions in a day or even like in a halftime? Do you think I should be eating within the halftime or am I getting enough energy beforehand? You absolutely want to eat during halftime. If you've got multiple things going on throughout the day, fluids are good. Um, have some fruit with you, a banana, perhaps some oranges, grapes, strawberries. Any of those things are great to eat throughout the day. They're not going to sit heavy in your stomach, but they're going to give you the energy you need to get throughout those multiple things that you have going on that day. I think this is something that, well, that college football teams do well. If you go in their halftime locker rooms, there's food everywhere and they're trying to get those calories in so they can perform better and continue their performance out through the second half and not decline or get super tired just because their nutrition gets low. Absolutely. And it's not about eating what your friend eats or what the person in the locker next to you eats. It's about eating what's best for you. Um, if you eat something, you, know, you eat a, a banana and you feel good and the person next to you eats a banana and some strawberries, don't eat the strawberries just because they are. If you feel good about your banana and your stomach feels fine, you got the energy, that's what you need. It's very individual based. So you kind of mentioned eating things that are good for me. What if I'm kind of new to this? What are some things I should avoid when looking for that food? You know, that might be a better question to answer, especially uh, if, if this is, you know, competitions are new or you're just getting ready for these. You got to avoid the fried stuff, like he mentioned earlier. Anything that's fried, it's going to just not make you feel good. Your stomach's going to not, not enjoy it. Spicy food, not a good thing to eat on a competition day. Um, again, the sugary cereals, anything you've never tried before, don't try on a competition day. I always tell my athletes, I don't do anything new on the day of a competition. And that includes what you're consuming as in, in your foods. You don't want to try something that you've mm -hmm. never done because um, you just don't know how your body's going to react to it. All right, Megan, I'm in class. I got competition to get done with class at four o'clock. I can't eat. And I, and I have a game at five o'clock. Mm -hmm. What do mm -hmm. I do to make sure I have enough energy to perform well? You know, Dylan, that's a great question because I think this happens probably quite often. If you got a minimum on time frame, you got an hour, 45 minutes before you have to go out and compete, grab something like a half peanut butter sandwich or a half a bagel with cheese, um, maybe a yogurt, um, and make sure you drink at least 12 ounces of water because, again, you need the fluids to help those, those carbs absorbed into your muscles and keep your body going. You know, less than an hour, eight ounces of water. You don't need quite as much, but you still need some. Maybe a banana, maybe some grapes, uh, saltines. These are all things that are pretty light on your stomach, but they're also going to um, give you the carbs that you need to get through that competition and, and keep you energized. Great information. Uh, I think eating right is a huge thing that is that if factor that we can push performance to the next level. If you do it correctly, you can get bigger, you can get faster, you can get stronger, you can perform better. And just overall feel better. Absolutely. It might give you that step up on your competitors for sure if you're eating right. Or if you're in class and you just feel sleepy and just just don't feel like you have enough energy throughout the day, it's probably because you're not consuming enough calories throughout the day. And Absolutely. 
even though we we think athletes and sports are great, school and life comes first. We want to feel good in life and school and make sure that we have that performance first. And make sure you're drinking enough water. Water is, is important. It's very, very important. We can't emphasize that enough. Yeah. We, as much as we maybe didn't say here, just always water first. Always. So we just want to end on that we are not nutritionists or dietitians, but we are very highly trained in nutrition, especially within the athletic population. And these are just general eating recommendations for your student athletes. They'll vary with different sports, different individuals, different types of athletes. Please consult a professional if you're struggling with performance and think that it is related to your nutrition. Also consult a professional before implementing supplements. They are not all created equal and some can be bad for your health or contain bad substances especially if you're looking to compete at the college level. Drug testing does happen at those levels and supplements can hide things in them that will show up positive on a drug test. And that's not something you ever want to happen. And we just scratched the surface here. This is just general idea. So please um, feel free to either contact us, another professional, work with a nutrition dietitian. It can really be a game changer if you have those resources around you. I can be reached at Megan, M-E-G-A-N dot Brady, B-R-A-D-Y, at drake.edu if you have questions for me. And I can be reached at D Gurnett, G-U-R-N-E-T-T, at selectmedical.com. Thanks, everyone. Make Thank sure you eat healthy.